Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another video. It is one, my friends, we're gonna be retesting or revisiting the GeForce GTX 1650 in 2022. This one is the 4GB GDDR5 model of the card. There's also a 4GB GDDR6 version, which is around 10% faster than this. And I already have a full-on Sunday video on the GTX 1650 here in the channel. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link down below in the description, by the way. But it was testing older games. It was uh, made a year and a half ago, so many more games have released since then, and this is why I'm gonna be retesting this card today, and also because a lot of you uh, voted for it. Now, the 1650 that we have here is the Gigabyte Mini ITX OC model of the card, and it doesn't require any 6-pin power connector from the power supply, as you can see. Uh, it takes all of its power through the motherboard's PCI Express slot, because it's a 75 watt GPU. That makes the 1650... Oh boy, almost <laughs> dropped it. We're turning into Linus Tech Tips, guys. That's nice. <laughs> the low TDP of this card makes it really nice for old office PCs that don't have very good power supplies or budget PCs or mini ITX PCs as well because it won't really dump a lot of heat into the case, of course. And uh, yeah, that's one of the main advantages of the GTX 1650. Now, talking a little bit about the history of the 1650, it released back in 20. 2019 for 149 US dollars. Yes, guys, it still costs more these days, unfortunately. <laughs> and it wasn't even good value back then because the RX 570 could be had for less money and uh, it was actually a little bit faster than this. It's based on the Turing architecture, 12 nanometer process, same architecture as the RTX 20 series, but of course this isn't an RTX card. This was the lowest end GPU in the Turing family, basically, on the desktop side of things. And now we will have like GTX 1630, which I uh, look forward to reviewing in a few weeks' time, maybe, when it releases. It also has 896 CUDA cores, and let's install it in the system and see how it plays some games in 2022, shall we? It's desktop time, GeForce GTX 1650 showing up dead in MSI Afterburner, along with the latest drivers, 512.95 at the time of recording this video. You can check out all of its specs here in Tech Power Up's GPU Z, it's a PCI Express 3.0 times 16 card. Over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 959 Hrx and 32 gigabytes of RAM to avoid CPU bottlenecks, and let's get right into the game. First up is Forza Horizon 5, 1080p resolution using the high settings preset. All right, let's make our way to the most intensive area, which is a little tunnel in the big city. Oh, <laughs> that was crazy, but we're good. We didn't even lose our mirrors. Look at that. So it's performing pretty well so far here at the high settings. Let's go to a forest area right now, which is usually pretty intensive as well with all of the bushes. God, Damn it, we, lose, we lost our mirrors now, guys. But if you want to play the game on ultra settings, you, you won't really get 60 plus FPS all of the time anymore. And ultra settings looks a lot better than high. But uh, high settings still looks really good anyway, so I would choose these settings to play with the GTX 1650 for sure. Okay, this is it, one of the intensive area. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay. 69% uh, lows for a second there. That was nice. And 369 now. Perfect stuff. So it's dropping into the 60s actually. Here, looking at the entire city with all of the cars and stuff and the buildings, it's very intensive indeed for the GPU to handle, uh, but still not a problem. Still gets 60 plus basically all of the time, which is awesome. Now, the problem is this little tunnel right here 65 by the way looking at the entire city from here this tunnel is super intensive especially when you get out of it and yep 54 right there at the minimum not a problem though it's only inside of the tunnels that it will drop that far or actually getting out of the tunnels and during the day because during the night that doesn't happen so you're fine to play Forza Horizon 5 it's actually a really nice GPU for it and it doesn't consume the 75 watts of power as you can see it's around like 66 watts most of the time it's cyber bug time guys let's go over the settings 1080p resolution low settings with medium textures and no FSR at the moment these are the settings right here all right so 1080p native resolution it actually performs okay ish oh boy it's dropping a little bit here into the 40s but it's all right it's getting like 970 performance maybe slightly slower than the 970 here 
Yeah, I, I was expecting a little bit better, honestly, but it, this is not terrible, you know? It's getting 40s, and in the minimum, this is a pretty intensive area here, so it's great that it's not really dropping that much into the 30s, and it's not stuttery whatsoever. And there is Bob. Bob is gonna die. Oh, come on, come on, come on, Bob. Bob. Oh, boy, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. No, I'm not stuck. Okay. All right, we're fine. <laughs> Cyberbug always scares me a little bit with the bugs and everything. I just want to kill Bob, dude. He doesn't die. So annoying. Please. We can't escape. Exactly, Bob. Just give up already. Thank you very much. He's dead now. We can proceed with the benchmark run, guys. Oh, boy. Is the car going to explode, actually? I don't want that. Anyways, 40-something here. It's, it's, it's okay. It seems like it is performing just slightly better than what it did back on release day. This street is also pretty intensive. I'm going to turn on FSR on ultra quality now. See how it looks, see how it feels, you know. So here we go. Uh, ultra quality, that's it. And, okay, it's a little bit sharper. For some reason, it was pretty soft at native resolution. But you can see a little bit more shimmering as well. And it's only dropping into the mid-40s this time. That area right there was really intensive, by the way. So we're definitely seeing an improvement of around, like, 10 FPS. Maybe slightly lower than that. But, hey, an improvement is an improvement. And the game still looks pretty good on ultra-quality FSR and 1080p resolution. So if you want to play like this i actually recommend the, these settings a little bit more than low settings oh boy okay <laughs> and uh, we're stuck uh, not anymore bob is still there i just killed bob what the hell is wrong with this game get over here still not dead okay he died now good stuff uh, by the way outside of the car things get a little bit less intensive so uh, whenever you're shooting around, you can actually achieve 60 FPS at times, which is really great. That wasn't possible before the FSR update, of course, unless you lower the resolution. Let's go. There it is. Considering it's Cyberbug, one of the most intensive games out there, and the 1650 can actually handle it just fine with less than 70 watts of power usage most of the time. It's pretty damn nice, isn't it? Halo Infinite is up next, and we're playing this one at 1080p using low settings, as you can see. And over here, in the minimum frame rate, we actually set it to 60, and that decreases the resolution scale. You can see right there to hit that performance target. All right, here we go. Big team battle, guys. So it's more intensive than the other modes, and it is actually performing pretty well. It's smooth, it's responsive, it's playable. It doesn't look very good, honestly, but hey, that's, that's what you gotta put up with. All right, let's throw some grenades here. Oh, I totally missed that second grenade, but hey, this is pretty stable, the FPS that we're getting. I like it. Oh boy, tons of explosions here. Pretty nice. It shouldn't really drop from 60 FPS because of that minimum resolution scale. Oh boy, I think we need to go. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's quite nice, guys. If you don't mind the lower than ideal resolution scale here, um, or lower than 1080p, which I think it's not a 1080p res, honestly, but it, it could be, I don't know, let's let's try to disable that. Yeah, that's off now, and yes, okay, so it is definitely utilizing resolution scale uh, to keep us above 60 frames per second. It's not really that bad looking, it's one of the best resolution scale implementations that I've seen in games. But yes, if you really want to play at native resolution, it will drop from 60 FPS even on the lowest setting. So I really recommend you to enable that other setting. And uh, yeah, it, it is going to be a pretty good experience in my opinion. Oh boy, there we go. <laughs> what if I set this to 120? That's that's crazy, actually. <laughs> it won't get that much, right? Oh my god, it actually does get pretty close. 100 plus. That's insane. And it doesn't look like a really low resolution. Yes, it's softer. You can definitely tell that it's softer, but it's still very playable, right? And if you have a high refresh rate monitor, this is, might be the way to go. I don't know what they do with resolution scaling in this game. It's pretty damn good. Wow. Very, very impressive indeed. Oh boy. Let me just kill this one. Okay. Good stuff. And this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. That's bad. 
<laughs> All right, this is Dying Light 2 now, and we're playing it at 1080p resolution, guys. I'm gonna show you that. Here we go, 1920 by 1080 using FSR on ultra quality and the low settings preset in DirectX 11. The low settings have these two on high, everything else on low. They could still go lower, by the way, some of these settings can be disabled, other settings can go to very low, so this is not complete lowest settings, although it's the low settings preset. Uh, it still looks really good, actually. For low settings, like, you, you still have some ambient occlusion, some good lighting. The colors are amazing in this game. I really like them. Oh boy. And uh, yeah, it, it looks really nice with the FSR ultra quality as well. It's not really like a native 1080p, but it's pretty damn close. It gets a little bit over sharpened. I could still live with that. Those. That's why we are uh, still using it here, okay? All right, let's get away from here. These guys are just chilling there. Oh, they are bad guys. Okay, I'm just gonna go up here. Okay, I'd like to see the city from above, but I'm not really seeing how I'll get to the top of a building or something. Oh, what? 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 Oh, they're, they're throwing things at me. <laughs> okay. Who is screaming like a maniac in the middle of a zombie apocalypse? That's not a good idea, people. Who is screaming, though? This guy? No, this is zombie. Okay. Hello, there's zombies. So many of you here. Oh, my. Oh, that is a big one there. Okay. Let's just move this way. Gonna get out of here. Top of the building. Yes, please. There are good guys here. Okay, good. Thank you. What? No, why? Why? I did not do anything. Oh, boy. Okay. Apparently, you can't really parachute into the rooftops. <sighs> just like in real life as well. What the heck? Right, I'm just gonna go here then. Okay. And, oh, this is a bad idea! <laughs> Far Cry 6, 1080p using medium settings here. As you can see, no FSR is being utilized in this one, by the way, it's turned off. And we are going over the VRAM limits just a little bit, but I think it's still gonna be fine. Uh, as you can see, it's right around 60 frames per second, although it does drop a lot, especially in vegetation areas, like forests and stuff. As you can see, 40s here. Oh, I, I, I thought it was gonna be a little bit better, honestly, because the game actually performed quite well uh, with the 1050 Ti. I remember testing that card here, and it was all right. Yeah, over here, we get 60 sometimes. It's not bad by any means, though, but it's a first-person shooter. You might want 60 plus all of the time, but at least it's a single-player title. I would be totally fine with this, honestly, guys, and I would actually choose to play with the um, medium settings in 1080p resolution. Maybe I would enable some FSR because the game is looking quite soft at the moment, and FSR actually oversharpens the image a little bit. So it might look a little bit better, maybe? Can't really complain about this. Looks beautiful on medium settings. The reflections are there in the weapons. The lighting look am looks amazing. I'm just gonna enable some FSR on ultra quality now to see how that looks. And, oh, okay, yeah, all right. So I'm actually utilizing a 4K monitor here, guys. So 1080p didn't really look good whatsoever. Uh, on a 1080p monitor, it might look a little bit sharper, but it was super soft here. And now, enabling FSR, well, <laughs> if you have a higher resolution monitor, it actually probably does look better, honestly. It's a lower resolution, but the upscaling is doing amazing work here in, in Far Cry 6, and it's getting us so many more FPS. Now it doesn't really drop from 60 whatsoever. I am just gonna do this. See some explosions, maybe. Yes, there we go, some smoke effects as well. Heal myself again. And uh, it didn't really drop there, guys. This is absolutely great in terms of FPS. And it's sharper as well, so I think this is good. I would play like this, honestly. No FSR looked a little bit worse, in my opinion. I'm not sure how it will come across in the YouTube video, because the compression will definitely kill all of these beautiful uh, forests and stuff. That Basically, the more detail that you have in the image, the worse the compression will be, but at least to me it looks better like this, guys. What are you doing? Hello, little Jack, how's it going? And now it's Broken Field 2042 at 1080p using the low settings, which are recommended for this card. It is... What the hell just happened there? <laughs> okay, start counting our FPS. Oh, it still stutters. No! This game has a problem with 4GB cards, guys. 
That's the 1% load. Look at that. And look at that frame time graph. Lots of stuttering happening sometimes. Ah, it's a big shame, you know. You need, what the hell are you doing? You need a card with more than 6 gigabytes of RAM to play this game without stuttering issues. Like, how did that happen? Battlefield 5 runs well with the 1 gigabyte card, guys. One gigabyte card, okay? Anyways, I'm not saying that this is not playable, it's just very underwhelming that we, we are seeing these results. Graphics look alright here on low settings, honestly. The problem is the textures look very good for low settings, usually. Yeah, look at that. If they would just lower the texture resolution, it would be perfect on these lower end cards. Uh, lower end, I mean, four gigabyte cards. And also, I'm not sure if they're hearing the feedback, but this new map feels just as empty as the other one. Like, what the hell is this? Oh my god, this, this area, why is this here? Why is that there? Like, there is nothing. I wish this game had taken another route, you know? A better one. Because I love Battlefield games. Oh boy. There we go. First kill. Nice. Alright, let's see another area. Oh my god, that is a huge stutter. Alright. Alright, wait a second. Alright, come on. There's another one there still. Is he gone? No, he's still there. All right, there we go. Nice. Yeah, so once... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, come on. I should have shot earlier. I could still enjoy the game. I... Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, as I was saying, I, I, I can still enjoy the game. And I did enjoy it a lot when it came out for about a couple of weeks. And then there was no more content. I, I had played the entire thing, basically. <laughs> you know, so I, I got bored of it and never touched it again. And now with this season one, it seems like they didn't really change all that much, right? Uh, at least from what I've seen so far. And now it's Elden Ring at 1080p using medium settings without motion blur. This is the preset. I just disabled motion blur because I don't like it, as you probably know. <laughs> now let's go, Roach. Here we go. That's my boy. First time we're seeing Roach here today, friends. And as you can see, this is actually quite playable. It's not 60 FPS. But, I mean, in a game like this, I'm fine with anything above 30 or 40 frames per second, you know. 30 might be a little bit too little to dodge some of the attacks of the enemies and stuff. But, yeah, th this is this feels responsive, especially with the controller, which I am playing it with. And uh, it feels really good. I like it. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Roach, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a very easy-to-kill boy right here. We got another one right here. All right. There we go. And uh, we're getting like low 40s in this area. This area is also one of the most intensive ones that I've come across so far. And also if you want to get 60 FPS most of the time, low settings is there. But I really don't recommend it because it looks way worse. Oh my god. I died before we could see the fire effect. <laughs> I am bad at this game. <laughs> oh boy, there comes the fire effect. Not a problem here for a 1650 apparently. Still pretty nice. Yeah, it didn't really drop all that much, did it? Smoke effect and stuff. Not bad, guys. It's actually really good. 512 damage out of him. Oh, he's attacking our jacks. No. Oh, I guess we're gonna die now. Yep, okay. Well, uh, yeah, it drops into the 30 sometimes, but not a problem in my opinion. Call of Duty Warzone is next. 1080p resolution using the low settings here. And I've actually tested this game recently in the channel with the GTX 1650. I wasn't really that impressed because this used to be much more well optimized. <laughs> These days, Warzone is just an optimization mess. Um, let me just see if it still goes to the menu if I reload this. No, they actually fixed it. Capital area gets us around 60 something FPS. If you want a competitive experience, you really will want to drop the resolution scale just a bit um, so it uh, stays above 60 at all times. But hey, it's not a bad experience, right? For a 1650, it's actually quite nice. Oh, what? Where? Okay, they're up there. They're up there. Ah! Get wrecked! <laughs> How did you not kill me, dude? Ha! Huh, I'm teabagging you! <laughs> oh boy, that, that was great. Okay, I saw some uh, shots coming from there. Alright, getting 50s. Look in that direction, guys. Look at that. Oh boy, I wonder if it's the water dropping it the most. Look at that. <laughs> 54 there. 69 average. That is perfect. Oh, hello, it's the other guy again. Haha, <laughs> get wrecked again. <laughs> so I'm marked on the map for the enemies. Oh, they're shooting at me. There he is. 
Come on. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. All right. Oh no, 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 no. Just stop, stop. Ah. It's God of War now at 1080p resolution without any upscaling for now using the original settings, which is what the consoles utilize. So uh, yeah, it's getting pretty good FPS and it's looking really nice here. Just gonna take a walk around here to see the frames and the graphics. I mean, I, I don't really see the need to play this game at the high or ultra settings, honestly, unless you have a capable enough GPU, of course. Um, it looks plenty good at original settings and it runs pretty nice here with the GTX 1650. Not a problem for this card. Given that it is a single player linear title, you don't really need 60 FPS all of the time, in my opinion. 30 plus is what you should aim for and the 1650 is certainly capable of delivering that there is going to be a very intensive cutscene right now uh i think yep there it is and the fps are going to drop a lot so 35 33 oh boy that is very close to 30 fps maybe your best bet would be like locking it to 30 and have a console like experience play with a controller it's going to feel great and it's not going to drop from 30 it's going to be consistent so yeah maybe that's that's what i'd go for here with the gtx 1650 uh, but now let's enable some fsr 2.0 on quality and the problem with this is that it looks a bit weird sometimes at 1080p resolution it, like there are some very noticeable fuzziness what is happening why are you just staring at him <laughs> okay and uh, we went from like 32 fps to 45 there so that's really good um but as you can see if i move my character around well you can't really see it that well right now i'm gonna wait until we uh, reach land to, s to show you that like whenever you move around for example right there you can notice it very well right that's that's really weird whenever the image is stopped it looks pretty good with fsr 2.0 at 1080p but um yeah i think you should utilize this upscaling technology at higher resolutions with other gpus because it looks great at 1440p and 4k uh, but not so good at 1080p you can see a lot of noise around moving things which well, it's kind of disappointing, actually, in this game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is next 1080p resolution, 100% resolution scaling, using the medium settings preset without motion blur or depth of field. We could actually utilize some FSR in this one, but it's FSR 1.0. It actually doesn't look very good here. And I think I am fine with this experience. It looks like it's going to get around the same FPS as God of War. Um, it looks beautiful on medium settings as well. Look at this. I mean, so colorful, so detailed the textures still look nice even for a four gigabyte card yeah i mean i would totally play the game like this guys it is very playable again single player title doesn't require a lot of um, reflexes and stuff so you don't need 60 plus all of the time and i feel like this is a great experience honestly for a gpu like this there is my boy beautiful roach my friends oh yes okay let's uh, venture out into the woods see if we can find a, a slightly more intensive area um, actually i would like to go on a raid or something but i just want to see fps inside of these bushes yes okay so it drops just a little bit yeah it's not even dropping into the 30s yet that's pretty good <laughs> let's do this where are we going with the boat it's not this way oh boy all right all right so dropping a little bit into the lower 40s once again but not a problem I think these guys might be a little bit... Oh, why, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, these guys are, are definitely very hard to kill. So we're just going to run around <laughs> their camp for a little bit. Uh, which is just as demanding as our camp back there. So not a problem here, guys. Okay, 1650 can actually play the game absolutely fine. Um, it's way better than the last time that I tested it, actually. I think it was stuttery and pretty bad. Oh, boy. Uh... Okay. Oh, wow. We're doing fine here. Okay, I just want to get this guy, actually. Yeah, too hard to kill my ash. It's good. We're good. Oh, boy. Well, 
perfectly playable. Stutter night time now, guys. Let's go over the settings here. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to get killed. 1080p resolution, competitive settings, far view distance, high textures, everything else low. DirectX 12 API, which actually gets a little bit better FPS than performance mode with some GPUs or capable GPUs if you have a fast CPU as well. GPU is maxed out, which is, of course, what we want in a GPU test. So, oh, is that a guy there? Yes. What the? Oh boy! No, 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 you're gonna die. Okay, thank you, thank you, random guy. Oh, that was close, actually. <laughs> so it is a high refresh rate experience. It's just a shame that it used to play a lot better than this with more FPS. Uh, this is what the 1050 Ti was capable of, and now you, you need a 1650 to get these FPS, but that's normal. In these games that have seasonal updates, they become more intensive as you... Uh, play, not really as you play, but as the, the game evolves, you know. All right, we're gonna get this guy. Good, 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 good. So for Fortnite and other esports titles that we're not really testing today, like CSGO and Valorant, I did test those in the other video that I made of this card, so check that out below in the description if you want to see those games. Uh, yeah, it's it's just gonna be perfect. And finally, I can't really leave GTA 5 out of it, otherwise you guys will kill me. So 1080p resolution, DirectX 11. This is GTA Online, by the way, and we're using the very high settings, my custom preset with grass quality set to high, post effect set to normal so we don't have any motion blur and everything else set to very high over in the advanced settings everything is off a lot of people say in my videos that oh you're gonna get like 30 or 60 less fps if you play online you're gonna drop from like 90 frames to 30 fps in online because online is so much more intensive that's not the case guys uh, that only happens if you have a slow cpu because the game gets substantially more cpu intensive whenever you are playing online of course because it has to render other players and what they're doing in the map and stuff um so yeah, shut up god damn it so well guys of course we are not seeing a cpu bottleneck here in gta online because we have that ryzen 9 5900x but you don't need the ryzen 9 5900x to get the most out of the gtx 1650 even in gta online something like a, a ryzen 5 3600 will get the most out of this gpu as well maybe it will drop into the 80s at times but who cares right it's gonna be pretty much the same experience no you bastard okay i'm you, you deserve to oh, oh oh i only shot once what what kind of gun do i have what? yeah okay it's online anyways if you pair this card with something like a ryzen 5 1600 i had like a gtx 1060 paired with that uh, in online you will get around like 50 to 60 frames per second which is still perfectly playable of course but yes way different from what you'd get um, in the actual single player title. Over here it's still GPU intensive of course because of all of the grass around us but it doesn't really drop from 60 FPS or it hasn't yet. It might still drop. Um, the, the bad thing and the worst thing about GTA Online is that it doesn't have animals guys. That completely sucks. We can't see Jack. <sighs> ah, it's such a shame. That's why I hate to play GTA Online and I never play it and Bob is not here for us to kill him at least we killed him in Cyberbug right so that's been it for GTA Online remember if you have something like an i5 4460 4th gen i5 or 6th gen i5 which a lot of people have with the GTX 1650 you are not gonna see these FPS so should you still buy the GTX 1650 in 2022 I think for like 120 bucks or lower, it's actually a pretty nice deal because you can actually play pretty much everything out there, albeit at low settings sometimes, but it runs the games at 1080p and it's an enjoyable experience, even in like Warzone, for example. But the problem is I am scrolling through eBay right now and I'm seeing that it's been sold for like 150 euros to 200 euros. And for those prices, I don't think the 1650 is worth it. I think there are better deals out there. Even new GPUs like the RX 6500 XT, which is faster than the 1650. I've seen those brand new for around 190, 180 euros. Euros, 
So what's the point of buying a three-year-old used GPU that's slower when you can buy something brand new that's actually a little bit faster, you know, like there's just no point. But I think the market is about to change. Prices are finally starting to drop. And if you can find one of these for 120 bucks, I think it is a good deal. And you might actually be able to find those in local deals, you know, just search around your area, see what you can find. I think 1650 still has a little bit of life left in it. So that's been it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.